Hello, and welcome to Subnautica Below Zero. Well, in the previous episode, we were over at, well, it was over at Fire Robotics Center. And the plan was to come back here, make ourselves a spy penguin, uh, plus the remote. And I do have those now, so they were pretty easy to make. And then the idea was we'd go back to Fire Robotics Center, uh, find ourselves some snowstorm fur, or at least that was the plan, but I've had a bit of a change of mind, because uh, one thing I actually noticed was that while we were over at Fire Robotics, the nameplate for Sam's room was missing. Zeta's, I think, was still there, but Sam's had been removed. So I thought the whole place had been shut down, but it turns out Sam was just obviously moved <laughs> by the looks of it. Now, I'm, I'm starting to get a bit puzzled because by robotics, if you look on this map here, it says it's for engineering and robotics, and that's what Sam specialises in. Now, according to Emmanuel and according to Lillian, she was over at Outpost Zero next, but Outpost Zero is for Zero Biological Research. Now I'm a bit puzzled, so that's like yeah, basically aliens, uh, for want of a better word. Um, so I'm, I'm really puzzled as to what she'll be doing over there, because that, that was her speciality, was like robotics. So the plan now is we're going to head over to, to here instead. So I've made myself an actual uh, beacon, because I've, I've left a beacon there's the one, that's the one that uh, we picked up by robotics, but I've left my own there, which is for the landing zone, just so I can find it easier. The plan now, uh, I'll just grab some more food, is to find out what happened over at Outpost Zero then, because, yeah, I know she was moved there, I just don't specifically know why. I suspect it's something to do with the fact that she's, yeah, starting to cause problems, maybe. I, I don't know, but according to the map, we should be heading north of Delta Station. Uh, so somewhere north of Delta Station is where this outpost zero is. I think it's an AHQ or something. Uh, so we're going to head in that direction. It can be a bit tricky to find that most of it. Uh, it's a case of... It's kind of, kind of north. It's not exactly north, it's kind of north. So. <laughs> I just more or less line myself up with Delta Station and just keep heading north. And I, I know roughly where to look for. So we'll start getting into the colder areas. It's really like, you know, when you start to see these icebergs, we'll, we'll literally come up against this like a cliff wall. We won't be able to go any further. And then it's just a case of having a look around to see where there's a point where we can get out of the water, so this looks about right. So yes, yeah, so we've got these things here. Oh, we've got these things, so these look familiar. Just exactly. I don't know if I've already scanned these things or not. It's a frost and enemy. So you've got to be careful then actually. Right, so that, that, that's a good guide that we've, we're in the right sort of area. Bit further along, so you then get these uh, stalactites here. Uh, you definitely want to be careful of those because those can give you a, a nasty shock. So, somewhere along here, there'll be an, a point at which we can actually get back to the surface. I think this is here, I think, maybe. Yeah, it's here because you can just about see there there's a, one of those plants. So we are, let's see, so there's, yeah, so we're just slightly east of north. And if you look on the map, yeah, that's, that, that is right, it's just slightly east of there, uh, north. So we'll leave our sea truck here. I'll get out and what I'm going to do, so that's quite good because we've got a flower here to get warmed on. I'm going to get my beacon out, and I'm going to leave this beacon here, just so I know how to get back here. So this is outpost zero. Right, so that goes back into slot five. So I'm a bit puzzled, because I mean, you've got the, 
got the telltale signs, you know, for all the terror there. There's no actual landing bay though, which has me puzzled. Unless they were coming in just through, you know, by shuttle. That's probably more likely. You know, surface to surface travel would be more likely by shuttle anyway. So this here is outpost zero. And that's in the same sort of like damaged state. Now I can understand this one because it's it's on the surface and we had meteor storms. Ooh, a blue scrub brush. Dangerous weather approaching. Seek shelter. Okay. So that's a snowman. So if we destroy the snowman. Of a ship because I saw, I saw it had a, like a tank on it, so I was getting a bit optimistic. I was thinking, ooh, maybe there's a tank there we could get. I'm struck down at 55. I'm gonna have to quickly dash inside, otherwise, I'll freeze. I could actually scan that, interestingly enough. Right, so what, what was that that we saw? I'll just go quickly back outside again. So. What's that, a hatch or something? A bulkhead door? Ah, oh, it's just a sleep, a sea glide fragment. So that was a bulkhead, so that's quite useful because you can use that to um, seal parts of your base off. So then, if you get a leak and it starts to flood, then obviously you can use that um, and you can contain the, the leaks. So there's something there I've just noticed, and I'm thinking, ooh, that's something I've definitely got to Motivational get. posters were banned from Xenoworks following a lengthy discussion at the annual company retreat three years ago. This poster is technically contraband. Okay. I didn't know that. It's, an emotiv it's a motivational poster as well. Right. So this is... Oh, just a guide to um, a post zero. Yeah research into alien communications and technologies so maybe she got pulled into the fact that the, that we do know they picked up some signaling if you will that's that distress signal they did pick up something so maybe she was actually pulled into here to help out so that is a possibility uh, oh, so you could have come here to get the power cell bed charger as well okay fair enough that's what I'm interested in though. It's a water filtration machine. So that means we'll be able to make our own water going forward. And I must admit, it is quite useful in that it doesn't just produce water, it, it, it's literally bringing the, uh, the sea water in, it's just extracting the salt out. Now, this has got me puzzled because this is on the surface. Now, when I was playing the early access, I built a base on the surface and the water filtration unit didn't work. So these are uh, these lead to the quarters. Well let's let's just explore around here. I must admit it's pretty dark back. Oh there's another jukebox to stay. Oh. Now these this area to the quarters has been damaged. So I, I can understand this place getting damaged because it'll have been, you know, um, in the path of a meteor storm. Whereas my robotics was inside of a cave. An alien intruder. No, it's just a game sort of thing, right? Okay, fair enough. Nothing particularly wonderful there. Let's take another trash can, another motivational poster. Well we already we already know about that that one's a picture frame. You, you can't really see much, it's just so dark inside of here. Oh, there's a vending machine. Oh, cool. We can get chips now. I can probably see me. I'm going to end up rebuilding the base and making it sort of like a canteen area. That'll be cool. Uh, nothing particularly useful other than that. Right, so let's head down. So this is the greenhouse. So we've got a PDA. Just yeah, just like a list of to do things. 
Interesting enough, we can get an indoor grow bed. So this will be a bit better than growing things in just plant pots. And then we've got... We've got like a lantern tree, which I must admit they were good back in the original Subnautica, but they've been they're not as good as they used to be. So if I pick that up... You can see we're getting we're getting a lot of body heat, I must admit, so that's actually quite useful. Hmm. That makes sense by not probably actually growing them out here, but the trouble is you lose water. And then up here we've, got, we've actually got the glass dome roof. So that'll be good. We'll put that on our uh, our bedroom area. Woohoo! Scan the plant the tree, why not? This dome hasn't been hit. You know, we've had a meteor storm, so yeah, it's not damaged or destroyed or anything. Right, if we go f deeper in uh, here, because there is the quarters over there we can look at, but let's have a look around here. Actually, what I could do. Aha, now I could do that, so that might be a bit better. So, yeah, there's a picture frame over there, trash can over there. Uh, there's our vending machine. I mean, I was just getting stuck on these benches. And then we've got a room for quarters. Now, air, fil uh, air filtration, a water filtration machine. So that looks like a serving area. Nothing exciting there. So, that's so another aquarium. But we've already learned that. It's another PDA. Hey Sam, you want to say hi to my kids? I told them I'd show them a day in the life of a sign. Oh, potato. I miss that fluffy little couch walrus. Okay, let's play that again. Hey Sam, you want to say hi to my kids? I told them I'd show them a day in the life of a scientist. Of course. Hi Orin, hi Svea. Tell us what you're working on. Oh, um, this is a personal project. Looks more like biology than robotics. Yeah, I was just thinking, I know no one is on my side with this, but what if I just found a way to take care of the deadly bacterium? I, uh, I wouldn't say no one is on your side. I'm on your side. I know, but you won't say anything to Emmanuel or Zeta, anyone. What effect would it have if I did? I'm not exactly employee of the month right now. I know. I wouldn't want you to risk more than you already have. I'm sorry. I wish I could do more. What? What are you working on there? And what do you mean by take care of the deadly bacterium? Uh, is that thing still recording? Oh, right. Uh, so, that was Sam, kids. I'll turn this off now. Oops. <laughs> so she was talking to the kids and accidentally recorded that conversation about the, the crowd. Right, so so that's what she's doing while she's over here, which is interesting. Anywho, we've got a, an ion cube here, so let's, uh, let's scan that. Let's see if it gives us any blueprints. Nope, it doesn't. But what I noticed was, well, yeah, we've got the... I'm trying to remember what these are there. Yeah, let's have a look. It's the modification station, that's it. So you can make a modification station. So up to now, they, that's the sort of things we'll be able to make in one of those. I haven't actually built one yet. I should do. Oh, I can actually make a snowman. So if you get a snowball, rebreather and stand or two tank, you can make your own snowman. Okay, but yeah, there's the modification station there. But I noticed that, that actually, I've actually found alien items, because that's like one of the little um, little robots that they've got. So that's interesting, and then there's all these little bits that they've picked up from various places. There's another period. I mean, I picked up a picture of a uh, potato back there. That's a, that's a, a cat. <laughs> Somewhere in here there'll be a picture, presumably, of... Uh, Oh no, it's not. It's an actual photograph of the deal. And then, right, we've got another PDA. 
While other teams have been pursuing more nebulous approaches to awakening the architects, I've tried to take a more practical approach. We know these part organic, part digital beings stored what they thought of as themselves on computers within their sanctuaries. And we know efforts to wake or communicate with them have been in vain. My theory is that to make first contact, these digital ghosts must first be recombined with an organic component. As Dr. Kaz Slaney's classic study noted, we know they had means to grow cybernetic bodies and to transfer their data patterns between them. There is a known probable architect sanctuary in this sector, but entry is not currently possible. If I can get inside and present the right vessel, I do think we will be successful. Was she right? Could there be architects living on this planet? Altera really messed up if they got that one wrong. Signal location uploaded to PDA. Oh, okay, cool. So that's interesting that. So the, the obviously they're definitely onto something when it comes to these architects, but I noticed there's a data box over here which has actually got the blueprint of the control room. Oh, cool. So we've we've picked up a, a PDA, so that's mine. Um not a PDA, we've picked up a a signal. So what's that? Architect Sanctuary. Hmm, okay. That's about 600 and something metres away or whatever it is. So yeah, so there's some interesting stuff going on over here, I must admit. That must be like little pictures uh, by Lillian's kids by the, by the sounds of it. So she was working over here, studying the aliens, the architects as they've called them. But there's nothing in there, so... I think what we'll do is we'll have a look at the, the actual uh, habitat quarters. See if Sam's left any more clues as to what's going on. Yeah, definitely dark. So, yeah, so you see there's Sam's nameplate. Now that was missing when we were over at Fire Robotics and there's the one for Lillian there. So I get information about Lillian from that. Was this Sam's space? What was she doing all the way out here? Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm trying to figure out. I thought she was like getting up to no good. So they're kind of maybe trying to move her out the area, or maybe it was a case of she, um, she might prove useful or something. I, I don't know. Maybe she convinced them she was of use. To, to, to study something I, it's kind of difficult to tell the penny hasn't quite dropped yet right so this is a single bed but this is, this is Lillian's room anyway so there's more pictures from her kids uh, another PDA Ah, oh, my darlings, Brian, Svea, and Oren, I'm counting the days until I can come home and... Okay, so that's just personal stuff. Then she's got I must admit, I do like that... I do like that poster there. Was that something I could just scan there somewhere? I could have sworn there was something I was getting that I could scan. No? Fair enough. Right, so this is Sam's room. Ah, so she's got a picture of uh, Robin there with uh, with a cat. Can I scan that now? There's another one of the spy penguin horses. Potato. You were a good cat. Oh no. She was supposed to look after that cat, but uh, for Sam it sounded like it. Well, it sounded like it didn't last really. Oh, got another PDA. I don't think I have a choice. I have to neutralize the bacteria myself. I'm a little nervous. Okay, terrified. But this thing is a death sentence. We shouldn't be messing around with it. I'm no biologist, I know. So does everyone else here. I haven't spoken to Danny since we fought about it. Zeta said she'd handle it and then didn't. Lil practically begged me to drop it. 
This is completely beyond the scope of your work. You have to stop before you jeopardize your standing with the company. I don't want good standing with a transgov that would do this. Robin tried to warn me. Maybe she was right, and Altera really is unfixable. Maybe I deserve better than this. We all do. I've synthesized the antibacterial agent. <laughs> I know my biochem at least well enough to do that much. I've stashed some away in one of the Pengling research caves, southeast of the Leviathan. That was probably the easy part. Now I just have to carry out the plan. Focus, be brave, worry about what happens next after the threat is neutralized. They're going to know it was me. If they send me home, when they send me home, where the ice isn't 20 feet thick, I can get my Augie bun back. We can cuddle under a nice warm blanket. Things with Robin will thaw out. They always do. Besides, I think she'll respect this. And then, maybe I'll start my own research outfit with an awesome team. I'd love to work on prosthetics again. Help people find peace and ease in their bodies. No more cold, no more spine, nothing that can be misused. <sighs> All right, now's my time. I've got this. Okay, so Robin hasn't, uh, hasn't actually said anything, but it seems like t she came to the conclusion that she was going to take this uh, virus out, she was going to neutralise it. She says she stashed, she stashed some away in one of the Pengling research caves. So if I look at the maps... So that's what these must be, little caves where there's a sign of a Pengling. She's highlighted that one. So it looks like, and she said it was southeast of the cave, suggesting that is their cave there. Because that's kind of southeast of the cave. I'm assuming that's north, but... So there's the... Yeah, so there's, it must be like a little... A little um, a very, very small cave that a penguin can get into, which has stashed the cure to the coronavirus virus in there. Interesting. Hmm. Definitely interesting that. So that's so I still don't understand how she got here. Whether she convinced you know like a manual to send her here or what, but either way, yeah, she came over here and found a cure and that cure is Something we obviously need to look for, presumably, but... Oh, that looks like a... Yeah, it's a fragment for the, uh, the builder, so we're going to get it from here. So, it looks like if you'd come here, or to Delta Station, you'd have getting some good, sort of, like, blueprints anyway. Oh! Oh, cool! We can, we can actually scan these. Oh, that is well cool, the prawn suit. Oh, we need four. Oh, that is seriously cool because the prawn suit is definitely useful. The trouble is, are we going to get enough? Uh. Right, so that's warmed me up a bit. Oh, there's not enough of them though. Ah, oh, drat. I know when the game came out, originally out in early access, you couldn't scan this sort of stuff, so we've got two fragments to make the prone suit, but we need four. Oh, I was getting really excited there, I thought, oh, that would be great, we'll be able to make the prone suit next, but no, there's only two or four fragments. Oh, foobar. Right, so there's a blueprint for a floodlight. I suppose that's something. It's one thing I'm not too pumped up about is the fact that if I get stuck on things, I may not be able to get back out again. <laughs> oh wow, this, this weather's not doing me any favours. I want to have a look over there, but I'm just bothered about the tower. I'm going to have to get, uh, get warmed up. 
Tell you what, let's uh, see if we can grab any, grab any more of that lantern fruit. Because that's... That seems to be pretty good. That's 69 body heat. Because we don't have a cold suit, but we can... You can still eat something. I mean, I've got I've got a thermos on me as well, so there's a bit more. I mean, we could grow these. I mean, that's another possibility as well. We could grow our own. All right, I can't. I can't. Um, ooh, right down the last water now. That's the only downside is they keep draining your water levels. But while we're here. Make a bit of a dash over to that other corner. I was a bit disappointed by that by that snowman. I really thought we'd be able to get some of the gear from that snowman, but we can't. He just destroyed it. That was a shame. Right, is there anything of use over here? Nope, still can't scan the yeah uh, the truck. I'd, I'd really like the forklift truck. Doesn't look as though there's anything here. That's a shame. Oh man, I, I could really do with a forklift truck. <laughs> right, I'm gonna go around the corner there. Let's see, let's see if there's a plant or something. Oh yeah, there's a plant over there. I can't scan that. At least I can get warmed on the plant. I just can't go too close, otherwise it'll set fire to us. There's something along here because they've got little lights. So you can see the, you know, they've got little uh, lights to to guide you. That's quite useful having the plants there, I must admit, as well, because then it heats you up. <laughs> Alien art. Aliens. Aliens be here. Scan there. Definitely heading into we're into, we're into a cave now. Ooh. So there's another This is a big alien place. So it's not the alien sanctuary. But uh, the signal is from the alien sanctuary's back there. We've already scanned one of these back when we were over at Five of Buttocks. Oh, there's a vending machine, so you're going to get the vending machine from there. Well, I say vending machine, it's a coffee machine. There's no PDAs or anything here, just snow. Now that makes sense, so there's a force field here, because that Lillian was saying she couldn't get in. So we can't get in there. It doesn't like cause me any problems, I'm just bouncing up, I'm not even bouncing up, I'm just hitting a, a dead end if you will, so we can't get into this facility. Whatever's there behind that, it's, it's blocked off by a force field. And interesting, she was talking about transferring, trying to transfer one of them into a um, into a physical body. Which is interesting to say the very least. But we're we're totally ignoring that side uh, of the story. <laughs> we're not paying any attention to that. Just to see what happens out of curiosity. Right. So nothing really else there. But we found some good blueprints, and we've got. To learn more about what happened to Sam. Still, as I say, I don't, I don't quite know how she ended up here. I just know she did. And she stashed a cure to the Karak. So we found out that that uh, Leviathan that Fred found has the Karak virus. All terror were up to no good by the sounds of it. Probably trying to exploit it. I mean, who knows? They could have turned it into a weapon. So it looks like Sam came to the decision that she's going to neutralise it. Uh, but, as we also know, she, well, she, unfortunately, she died. 
nothing to scan there. So that's interesting. That's oh, it's a bit of a pain that there's only two fragments that we could have scanned. Uh, we could scan for the pawn suit. Ah, oh, Uba. Yep, nothing interesting there. Right, so I suppose in that case she's actually told us. Uh, find the map again. So it sounds like somewhere around here, it looks like there there's a cave. And that's where the uh, the Leviathan's in. And Sam found a cure, or made a cure I should say. And she's she's hidden it inside a little cave here. So that's as far as we know, so it's a okay. case so we're gonna have to come back to here. I think I think we must have had landed about here. Uh, when we came here, so that's interesting that there's a landing entry there, but when we went to visit the place, we landed about here. So the plan will be to take our Penguin and Penguin remote control over to this place. I mean, we'll probably freeze, we might survive, but I'm tempted to, um, I'm tempted to sort of probably try and see if we can get some of the, the fur from the actual uh, the snow stalkers make a cold suit we'll just have to see but it sounds like we need to visit the cave here as well as this little cave where the spy penguin can probably get the cure assuming she hasn't actually used it to actually cure the leviathan already so yeah we need to head back to fire robotics again and well, that's for another episode <laughs>